To be fair to Hancock, he makes no claim to be looking at the subject impartially. It's not my job to be balanced or objective, he writes. He's just providing a persuasive, single-minded case for the existence of a lost civilization to balance the history books and academics who do nothing but refine existing orthodoxy. But trying to be persuasive doesn't give Hancock the right to fabricate evidence, misrepresent findings, and hide facts that contradict his beliefs. And Potholer is absolutely right here. You shouldn't use fabrications, misrepresentations, or omissions to support your position when you're having a debate. It's intellectually bankrupt. So when I was talking to him, you can imagine my shock when he kept shifting the goalposts and absolutely not admitting that he had done something wrong, completely misrepresenting Hancock in words in the comments section, but he would blow up these comments that were so big that it was quite obvious that he's hiding from addressing the actual point by gish galloping into all these other directions. Normally, I like to make these videos in a set kind of manner where I give my opponent the benefit of the doubt. But after this, I see that it's very important that I make this clear and concise. So here is the top eight ways that Potholer has misrepresented, fabricated, or omitted things in his response to Graham Hancock's episode one of Ancient Apocalypse. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Tell me lies. Tell me Those of us that have followed Hancock for a while are well aware he has consistently posited a major global cataclysm much worse than the accepted version of the Younger Dryas up until the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis was posited and peer reviewed. This has just happened a few years ago, right? Up until then he had hung his hat on earth crust displacement theory back in Fingerprints of the Gods and on a few other ideas along the way, but once the YDIH was peer reviewed, then all of a sudden dude's on board with that, of course, all right? So, so keep that in mind as we go forward here. What happened 12,800 years ago was an event called the Younger Dryas, a period when deglaciation suddenly went into reverse and the earth rapidly cooled down again. Hancock calls the Younger Dryas a major cataclysm. As the ice sheets advanced, ecosystems changed and some large animals became extinct. And apparently Hancock had predicted all that back in 1995. To me, in 1995, when I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods, but there was no compelling evidence for a global cataclysm then. But of course there was compelling evidence back then. The Younger Dryas has been known about for 120 years. So not only do we have potholders saying that Hancock says that the Younger Dryas is some major global cataclysm. Hancock calls the Younger Dryas a major cataclysm. Which, as I already pointed out, he would require something much worse that would require some major flooding. But on top of that, Potholer selectively edited this clip from Joe Rogan to make his case. It made sense to me in 1995 when I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods, but there was no compelling evidence for a global cataclysm then. I just... Uh, all the evidence seemed to point to that time and a massive global event. And then from 2007 onwards, you know, more than a decade after I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods, we get a group of more than 60 major scientists who are seriously proposing that the Earth was hit by multiple fragments of a giant comet 12,800 years ago and that this caused a huge rise in sea level and extinctions of megafaunas. They are not saying that it also wiped out a lost advanced civilization of prehistory. I'm saying that. So does Potholer miss that part? And now, by the time you see this, he might have actually added that link into the description, but at the time of recording, there is no link for this. This is the one video that is missing a link in his description. Maybe that was an accident, or maybe he knew that if you went and looked, you would find out that he had completely misrepresented Hancock here. Hancock's explanation is that this civilization existed somewhere he doesn't go, like... One of them is the Amazon. Another is the Sahara Desert. And then under the continental shelves. And let's not forget buried under the ice of Antarctica, which he proposed in his book, Fingerprints of the Gods. And here we have Potholer committing an omission in order to make Hancock look a little stupid. Yes, in Fingerprints of the Gods, Hancock did say that there might be a lost civilization under the ice in Antarctica because he was positing that the Earth crust displacement theory was actually correct, which has been disproven, but the Earth crust displacement theory was endorsed by Einstein. So the reality is, is Hancock is not positing some insanity. Oh, by the way, there's just shit anywhere I want to put it. He's following, he was following science, albeit science that was dead at the time. He was following science that was compelling to Einstein. But we don't need to mention any of that because that'll actually make him look smart.
I was curious as to why so many people swallow whatever Hancock tells them without question. Looking at the comments on the video of his Joe Rogan interview, some of his fans are impressed with his eloquent speaking voice, his recall of information. Whether the information is real or made up doesn't seem to occur to them. And praise is heaped on interviewers like Joe Rogan for sitting there and letting Hancock unleash all these claims without once critically questioning a single thing he says. It seems like heresy to question it because Hancock's giving his audience what they crave. And here Potholer misrepresents the entire community by claiming that none of us would ever criticize Hancock, especially Joe Rogan, which, of course, is BS. Joe Rogan has not only multiple times asked Hancock some very skeptical questions and probed at his answers, but he's also had a debate, which I'll link down below, between Hancock and a dude from one of those skeptical inquirer type magazines. And while he did side with Hancock overall, Rogan still multiple times just questioned Hancock, points out that this isn't a very good point, basically does a lot of the same stuff I'm doing here with a little bit more woo and a little bit less science. But the reality of it is, is lots of us question Hancock. This is a BS claim. A straw man, maybe? I don't know what you want to call it, but this is definitely just not true. <coughs> the last thing we want to believe, it seems, is that our ancestors were smart enough to learn for themselves how to build these things over a long period of time. But if outside help is always needed, I wonder how Hancock's imaginary civilization figured it all out on their own. And here Potholer omits facts that would damage his case because he's trying to show that technology just does a steady, steady climb, right? Crappy pyramids on the way to good pyramids and then presumably right on up to us, right? But we don't have that. We have this bell curve. It goes cr good pyramid, good pyramid, good pyramid, oh, ba bam all the way back down to piles of rocks. And he's well aware of that. But he can't present that without undermining his case, so he doesn't. And there's no excuse for this fabrication either. At first sight, this open terrace could be mistaken for a natural formation of volcanic rock, which is why archaeologists were so slow to investigate it. But archaeologists didn't mistake it for a natural formation, as Hancock well knows. And he also knows they weren't slow to investigate it. Again, we have to go back to other statements Hancock made to show he knew that very well. This megalithic site that's been in plain view and was in fact first inspected by archaeologists as early as 1914. Yes, a megalithic site in plain view, not mistaken for a natural formation, and investigated as far back as 1914 when a Dutch archaeologist wrote a report about it. The site was forgotten about during the turmoil of World War II and the bitter war that ended Dutch colonial rule. But when three farmers rediscovered it in 1979, Indonesian archaeologists immediately investigated. Indonesia's National Research Centre of Archaeology issued a report on Gunung Padang in 1985. At that time, Hancock was writing a book about the AIDS epidemic. After the National Research Centre of Archaeology came studies and investigations by archaeologists from Indonesia's Directorate of Antiquities, the National Archaeological Research and Development Institute, and the Bandung Archaeological Centre. So ironically, archaeologists took an interest in the site long before Hancock did. I've been having a conversation about this with Potholer, and it's been hilarious because he moves those damn goalposts so much that I'm just like, I'm tickled. It's like it pushed me all the way through. Like, instead of being angry about this, like I would get sometimes, I'm just like, I'm just laughing at this. This is hilariously absurd. This is like talking to a kid. So he just keeps moving stuff around. So I'm just going to respond to the, the clip again, and we'll let him just babble about whatever the hell he wants in response to that. Because... It's very clear what Hancock is saying here. At first sight, this could be mistaken for something natural. If you spend some time looking at it, you won't do that. But if you just glance at it, you're going to do that. And so it wasn't investigated for a very long time. The reality of it is, is there was a hundred year period before 1914, over a hundred year period, where the Dutch were actively investigating temples and megalithic structures all over Java, and they never once come across Ganong Padang and investigated it. Now, whether or not the archaeologists walked by that hill and decided not to go up and check it out, or whether they walked up to the top of the hill and looked and said, I don't know, Hancock doesn't say, neither does Potholer. But what Hancock does say is because this hill may or may not be a man-made structure at first glance, at first sight, 
it wasn't investigated. But Potholer is going to pretend otherwise, and he's actually going to do all this research and make all these claims about the future of the site well past when Hancock is talking about. And in my opinion, he's doing this in order to make it look like a very well-researched portion and to keep you from actually digging. Because if you look at it and dig for one second, you can find out that, yes, Hancock is telling the truth. For over 100 years, people were running around looking for exactly this kind of thing on the site. But because, at first sight, it doesn't look like an archaeological site, it wasn't investigated for over 100 years. Towards the end of that first episode, Hancock moves to another place where volcanic columns were used in construction at Nan Madol in Micronesia. Archaeologists believe most of the construction visible at Nan Madol today dates to around 900 years ago when the blocks were quarried at a neighboring island. But during my explorations on previous visits, I found several of its megalithic pillars extending out below the waterline suggesting that earlier versions may have been constructed when sea levels were lower during the last ice age. Or it suggests that Hancock has rushed to judgment in claiming these are megalithic pillars without bothering to check whether they actually are. But anyway, first, what image do you have in your head, what impression of events, based on Hancock's story? Narrow-minded archaeologists developed a fixed idea about construction based on what they see on land. But then Hancock went underwater and discovered pillars that could be much, much older, thus challenging their dogmatic conclusion. First, Hancock implies that he found the underwater pillars. But in fact, they'd been found about 20 years earlier by an archaeologist called Arthur Sachs from Ohio State University. And here we have an example of either, I don't know how to speak English, or fabrication. We'll decide which one it is here in a second. He's claiming that Hancock says that he's the one that found those pillars, because that's the word he used, was found, right? Well, listen, listen to what Hancock says exactly. Archaeologists believe most of the construction visible at Nan Madol today dates to around 900 years ago, when the blocks were quarried at a neighboring island. But during my explorations on previous visits, I found several of its megalithic pillars extending out below the waterline. If I was to say to you that somebody told me that down at the grocery store there was no ice cream and I went down there and said that I found ice cream, would I be claiming that nobody else knew there was ice cream there? So would that be it? Or if I said that I was going to go down to the Lincoln Memorial and that I found the statue of Abraham Lincoln, would that be me claiming that I was the only one that knew where it was? Or if I started walking to the west and I say I found the Columbia River because I live semi-close to it, would that be like me saying I was the one that discovered the thing? Of course not. But if, you know, you want to give me the worst possible benefit of the doubt and you want to make me look like a drooling bonehead, well then, yeah, you would say that I claimed I discovered the Columbia River, wouldn't you? There are dozens of examples of monuments being built around that time, and even older, not just in Indonesia, but all over Southeast Asia. Sometimes we know exactly how they were moved, because the practice continued until recently. Sometimes we know how they could have been moved. All it takes is organisation, manpower, a few simple tools, and lots of rope. So there's really no mystery in how people from 2,500 years ago could have rearranged columnar joints they found naturally scattered on top of Gunung Padang. And that's the problem for Hancock, because his books and his films depend on a mystery that he steps in to solve. So he has to manufacture one. And here we have another misrepresentation, because Hancock doesn't say these people couldn't move those stones up there. He has a different question that is his mystery. Why, why don't we watch the clip? 7,000 years ago, far from being builders on such an epic scale, there's no evidence that the people of this region were anything other than simple hunter-gatherers. What could have motivated them to make the immense effort of bringing all these blocks here? He's not saying how did they get them up there. He's saying what motivated them. Why? 
So Pothole, in this case, is misrepresenting Hancock's claim as to what the mystery actually is. And it's in the video that Pothole are chopped up and used to respond to, so I'm going to assume that he saw this clip. For a long while, archaeologists thought it was just another hill in the jungle. But there was a problem with that view. Yes, there was a problem with that view. Hancock made it up. And there's no better evidence for that than Hancock himself. In a speech posted in 2018, Hancock's claim was qualified. For a very long time, it was thought to be just a natural hill. That's all. With an interesting megalithic site on top of it. Ah, yes, just an ordinary hill with a megalithic site on top of it. And in an earlier interview posted in 2016, he said this. For a very long time, people believed that it was just a natural hill. With? With a, an old, but not extremely old, megalithic site on top of it. So clearly Hancock knew that his claim in the Netflix film that archaeologists thought this was just another hill was nonsense. He made this up simply because it made archaeologists look stupid and it made him look smart. And here's another misrepresentation here. Because we have a situation, like I pointed out earlier, where there was the Dutch period before they excavated at Gnong Padang and then 1914 when they first showed up and started checking it out. So during that time before that, it was thought to be just a natural hill. During the time after that, it was thought to be a natural hill with an interesting megalithic site on top of it. Now Hancock posits that it's not a natural hill, that it's a man-made hill. So in all of these times, Hancock's talking about it being a man-made hill, but when he says that there is a megalithic site on top of it, I would assume that he's talking about the time after the people had discovered it and documented it. And when he's talking about a time without a megalithic site on top of it, I would assume that he's talking about the time before that, the hundred plus years before that, when archeologists were running around that island and never discovered it. But what do I know? And if you think there really is evidence that Gunung Padang is a 20,000-year-old pyramid or that these pillars at Nan Madol are man-made, please post it. If you can't do that and prefer to launch a tirade against my voice or my personality, please do so. I'll take that as an admission you can't find fault with my critique. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, isn't that cute? If you can't prove that Nam and Dollar and Gnog Padang are exactly what Hancock claims they are, you must have no problems with this entire argument whatsoever. How about this? I think that Graham Hancock's full of crap when he says that Ganong Padang and that Nam Madal are good pieces of evidence, and I think that you are full of crap eight times throughout the course of this video that I was able to show demonstrably, and numerous times throughout the course of your video where it's like, I could pull on this thread some and make accusations, but I think that every one of these eight is pretty clear. I'll be doing some more near videos in the near future. Thank you very much for watching it this far. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell and all those fancy things that you do. And we'll see you next time. So I would love to hear from Hancock fans to see what you think. Please don't just write comments saying my video is bullshit or it's an ad hominem attack against Hancock. I'm not judging his eloquent speaking voice, his intelligence or his personality. I'm happy to agree with all the gushing praise of his personal qualities. I'm not judging his intelligence or 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 I'm not judging his intelligence or